jump aboard, my lady. Yep. yep. Hard to do that gracefully on camera, huh? So at this moment, Vernon and I just had no idea of the amazing people we're gonna meet. This video is maybe a bit messy and don't give a whole view of the great time we had here. Cause to be honest, we try to enjoy it in real life and not through the camera. And we didn't get as much footage as we wanted. But I hope that you will feel a bit of the heartwarming vibe through this video. Kilo is a region of the north of Sumbawa Island. The main activities are agriculture. They are growing corns, rice and a lot of red onions. Udin was waiting for us in the village called Malayu. Here is Udin, a few kids from the village and his sister, Yayu, with her son. Udin and his wife, Ramayanti, welcomed us to their house as members of their family, offering to us and every guest visiting him a selection of organic fruits from the garden and delicious lunch of migoreng or fried tempeh and tofu with veggies, all from their garden. Udin is an English teacher, so all kids in the village know him well. Are you a student? Yes? What do you study? I study at Elementus Banana Shepherd Villa. In grade? Grade? Four. What is your favorite subject? It's math. Math? Math? Wow. Math. What's your hobby? It's reading. Reading? Reading. Oh. Reading English? Everything, yeah. Read everything. <laughs> Kids are also welcomed in the afternoon to come to Udin Place to learn about gardening and food self efficiency, or to practice English, or just read books. I have feet too. Side has right enough. So right now we're in the garden of Udin. He's got an amazing garden. I'll show you a bit more, but we're uh, going to go and pick a papaya for on the boat. This is Udin. Hi. Uh, we're going to take one of your papayas. Mary, uh, could you please take yourself so as much as you Which like. one? This one? So I, I just turn or I... Uh, which is better? Twist. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> The other one? This, yes, this I one? think it will last maybe one week. Yeah, many. Are you bored? Beautiful papayas. There are different variety of the one we are taking usually. Normally they are more long. But we taste it, these ah, ones are really more fruity. This is the golden one? Yeah, they are ah. the one where they taste a little bit of melon. It's really awesome. good. The garden of Udin is gorgeous. You can find many plants, vegetables and fruits, all organically grown. Udin is showing to the kids how to plant and take care of plants at home to make them also self-efficient in food a beautiful project that we particularly liked We spent hours in the peaceful garden in the freshness of the shade having conversations with Udin and his wife They told us about the way of living here and we had many talks about music, culture, our home countries in Europe, and also learned some Bahasa Indonesia. We never learned so many words in one day. 
always good to practice with people. But we still need Google Translate sometimes to understand each other. We also met two young friendly men. Here it is Iko the nephew of Udin and this other guy that if you listen carefully is humming all the time he is called Jordan they played the guides with us and took us in all the picturesque places of the area on their motorbikes as this beautiful white sand beach funny fact here, everyone was super keen to have selfies with us, as if we were super famous. That was a bit embarrassing sometimes, but also quite amusing. We did also an afternoon trip, hair in the wind. Motorbike ride was the best to enjoy the panorama of Kilo. He took us to this beautiful peninsula to show us a lookout. Come to this lookout. The Jordan told us about it. It's pretty cool. This little peninsula above the uh, ocean each side. Beautiful. Pretty cool spot. And we took the road again. So the boys have uh, brought us out to this place called Kore. 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 Sangar. Yeah, it's outside of the region of Kilo. Kore. Uh, well, we told them that our little electric mixer smoothie maker thing had died from salt water, and um, we sort of asked if we could buy a stone mortar and pestle somewhere, and they were like, yeah, yeah, there's this other place in here. They actually just make them, so we're gonna look around and see how they make these stone uh, grinding bowls, and we're gonna buy one. Pretty cool to see handworks still in action. You can hear the guy grinding in the background up here. Pretty loud here, but uh, I guess this is just a sandstone sort of area. The, the rock's quite soft. They're making tombstones and uh, yeah, these mortar bowls and yeah, many things out of stone. Yeah, you can see that they're not too worried about their hearing. None of them have got hearing protection, and uh, but they have got a mask on to stop the dust. But no gloves, no safety equipment. And they sit in these little huts all day, grinding away, but um... You found the one you want? Yeah, I think it's good. It's Beautiful little good one. To do Indonesian food. Make some sambal? Yeah, I'm gonna make yeah. some sambal. <laughs> <laughs> the devil! We did also some stops to eat and buy some fruits for the boat. Good. Super good. Super sweet. Stop on the side of the road and buy a watermelon. This one. 30,000. They come from the field here. And stop in a place along the road to buy some green coconuts. We met this dog, who seemed to be a bit confused in the middle of all these chickens. In the evening, in general, we stopped in local street food places. 
professional. We ate some Indonesian classic food as I am Geprek. It is a smashed leg of chicken with chilies or this sort of fried tacos called Bartabak that Eco introduced to us. Delicious. One afternoon, Iko invited us and all the neighbors to show us the traditional dance of the girls. A gracious dance that the women are learning young, that they practice for special occasions such as wedding days. At the end of the dance, the dancers are throwing some grains of rice. Originally, this dance called Wuha Bongi Moncha, I hope I'm pronouncing well, was to wishing a good harvest. Nowadays, it is a dance of welcoming for guests and the yellow rice is a sign of respect and hope. This dance is still often performed in Sumbawa, in Bima area. They also proposed to me to follow the dance to learn a bit about the slow and soft movements of this dance. But it was quite difficult, especially without any lessons. Kids here were amazingly curious of us, always following us at distance at the beginning because they were a bit shy, but after a while they all wanted to play with us. 
Everyone seems to love sport and game here, even adults. The women have a volleyball meeting at the end of afternoon, when the temperature is cooler. I was amazed by the level they have. They are really playing as pro. They even bet a little bit of money on the teams to spice up the game. Eco organized an afternoon of a traditional game of the village called Gio. The closest game to Gio could be baseball, I guess. You play with two pieces of wood, one big that you use as a bat, and a smaller one that you will throw a bit as a ball. There are two teams, and there is a certain number of different throws to do mark points. As you can hear Eko, the loser's team have a punishment. And sadly for Eko, that was his team. The team that lost has to carry on the back the winners. And that was really not an easy thing with the big Vernon. So I want to say a big bravo to him. The whole vibe in this village is just incredibly nice. Even if we experimented many good moments with Indonesia during our journey, Kilo is and will stay in our hearts as a big highlight of our sailing trip. More than discovering a new place, the lifestyle and the culture of Kilo, we actually met true friends. So, for our last evening in Kilo, we all had a little bit of sadness to know that it will be the last time together. Jordan proposed to us to go in a cafe with open mic and some instruments and Jordan showed us his talent in guitar and singing. forcing you to accept to always leave the good things you find on the way. 
but that was one of the places that it was the hardest to say goodbye. Kilo was this kind of location that you feel instantly at home and where you can imagine to stay forever. If you are watching us, all of you amazing people of Kilo, Udin, Yanti, Iko, Jordan, Mitun, and all the smiley people we met on the way, Vernon and I really want to thank you for all the good times we had in your place, and we hope to come back one day. In the morning, the day of our departure, we had the surprise to see Jordan, Udin and his wife to say us goodbye from the beach. us out of it. We just pulled up the anchor and motoring away from the beach here in Kilo. And it's super sad. I'm crying a little bit. But, uh, yeah, we had really good time. They were super good with us and especially at this time with all these crazies and everyone is afraid of each other. Like it's really, it's really good to make good friends and really important to, to feel alive, to have a um, people generous friendly and just yeah let us come in their life and showing all these beautiful things around that was really really good yeah it was pretty special we've obviously had some special times and and you know met and been involved in special communities in the last few years you've seen them on the videos but this was a a really special one to be honest uh really sad to leave and uh, yeah, we, we wouldn't leave if we didn't have to, but that's part of sailing. You, you, you know, you, you're constantly leaving. You're constantly arriving, but you're constantly leaving as well. But yeah, it was a tough one. They were yeah. incredibly nice. Like uh, Udin and his wife, they live about two kilometers away, which doesn't sound far in Europe, but you know, here you've, you've got to go that distance. And they came down to the beach and waved us off now, as you see. and. Uh, Jordan our friend from this village as well and uh, they didn't tell us they just were there you know it's pretty cool yeah yeah like rip oh well yeah, yeah it's just uh you know with corona it's so hard everyone's so suspicious and also us you know like we don't want to put ourselves in not that we worry about putting ourselves in danger but we don't want to put anyone else or make them think they're in danger from us or and it's just a lot of times you know double thinking everything but here they didn't have any doubt in their mind they wanted to interact with us and they wanted to bring us into their lives and pretty cool yeah thanks patrons super cool yeah yeah you guys are special you know you guys are sort of who were making these videos for and mum of course your family but yeah, it's uh, amazing that we get to bring these, these things to you and I hope this comes across a little bit. We look forward to everything we do along the way and uh, good times and bad times. So see you next time. Bye bye.